Hey guys, so it's November. I had planned on finishing this in October and it's still not finished yet. I would like to explain. Hey guys, welcome. Thank you guys so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where I come every Friday and I talk about how important it is to make time to make things. I specifically like to weave and I like to spin, I like to knit, I like to dye, I love the fiber arts. I love seeing how they combine, how they do everything together, how they just make beautiful and amazing things. It has captured me for many, 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 many years now and I still love talking about it. So thank you guys so much for being here today. Now, let's talk about this thing that I'd started in January and I have been doing this project called the Epic Cloth Project since January. The whole point of this project is to take one big giant project and to break it down into multiple steps that are actually manageable and doable. Now, all of this was going along swimmingly. It was going great until probably about September when things got really just crazy busy and busy with Knit City preparation, busy with retreat preparation, busy with just back to school, busy with getting things done for the School of Sweet Georgia. Like it was just crazy time. And I think somewhere in there I decided to knit two sweaters and just all sorts of crazy things like that. So this project kind of got pushed to the back burner, pushed to the back burner. And I would just very, very slowly and you know incrementally come up to the attic and I would thread, I would tie knots, I would do all sorts of things like that in the attic and finally I have it all, it's all warped up, it's beautiful. However, there's a mistake in here. So there is a little bit of a threading error where one of the warped ends has gone through the wrong heddle and so two of them are being lifted at the same time where they shouldn't be and so it's making for a weird it's making for a weird there's a there's a mistake in the fabric which needs to be fixed and so that's why it's kind of on hold here it's also on hold because I don't know if you can see but I'm sort of auditioning different weft colors and I don't like any of them like none of it is working out the way that I thought and so I've been feeling the need to dye more yarn, more weft yarn for this project. Uh, but then I also kind of feel like if the weft yarn is being somewhat hidden by a project that is mostly warp faced, what's the point of dyeing all of that yarn? Is it really necessary? Or is it just something that's going to prevent me from moving forward with this project? I kind of feel like I should just order some pre-dyed yarn and weave it. And like I was seeing in a previous episode, this kind of becomes my sample for the next thing. Because I can already see things that I would change from this project to the next project. I wanted it to be very, very warp-faced, and it's actually less warp-faced than I had expected. So I think that for the next go-round, I would need to make changes anyways. I think I've decided I'm just going to order some yarn. But you know, getting to the end of this one epic project has been sort of making me think about next year's epic cloth project. I still want to do this again. I still want to use the same kind of process of breaking things down to tackle something that I've never tackled before. In this case, this project was about tackling the idea of painting a warp chain that was made entirely of cotton, learning how to do the fiber reactive dyeing in order to do that warp chain. And um, basically working with cellulose fiber, which I don't usually use because we're mostly using wool and silk and all these kinds of things that we use for knitting. So to venture more into the cotton world and the cotton dyeing world has been a big thing for me this year. And so I want to continue on doing that for next year. But uh, but yeah, it, it has allowed me to learn a lot of brand new things this year. So I want to use the same construct to learn something new next year. So I've had lots and lots of ideas milling around in my head of all the things that I've wanted to work on. But I will mention this one thing that has been 
for probably about a year now, been sticking in my mind that I really, really want to do. And uh, probably about a year ago, I started an Instagram account called Low Meets Loom. And it was really just a place where I could start posting more and more of the things that I was weaving personally. Like, even if it had nothing to do with Sweet Georgia, had nothing to do with the yarn that we dye, or nothing to do with any of those things, but it was just purely my own weaving work. And that's what I was posting at Low Meets Loom. And eventually, I thought maybe someday, one day, I would design something that was a little bit more cohesive rather than just making a whole bunch of random things and weaving a bunch of random things. Because it's one thing to be like, oh, I can weave rep weave. Oh, I can weave this waffle weave. I can weave all these weave structures. I can do all these different things. I just don't want to be making randomness anymore. <laughs> I feel like that's a that's a ongoing theme in my life. Not making randomness anymore, but making things more intentionally and with more focus. And so what I was thinking in the back of my mind is that Low Meets Loom could tackle something like the design of a comprehensive thing. And I'm thinking that thing might be rugs. <laughs> it sounds so weird to say it out loud, but it's something that I have been thinking about for some time. I have talked about before how I like the idea of doing things that are warp-faced or things that are weft-faced. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of opportunity for colors to interact when you see both warp and weft interact with each other. But because of the graphic qualities that you can get out of a hand-woven cloth by using things either warp-faced or weft-faced, those two options really seem to speak to me. And um, so I am thinking about putting together a design for a rug. Um, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> thinking about how it might be done. I'm thinking a lot about the tapestry techniques that Jana teaches in her tapestry weaving workshop and using some of those techniques in uh, a rug type project because the things that she's teaching are weft faced weaving. They are just basically where you don't see the warp threads at all. It, all of the weft is packed down so you only see the weft color, the weft texture, all of that kind of stuff. And so that is very much in the forefront of my mind right now. But yeah, I'm thinking about something to do with rugs, something to do with weft faced. Um, I'm thinking also about a lot of the content that I want to make for next year, which is around natural dyeing, for one, that's a big thing. And also another big thing, which is about... So yeah, I have been thinking about being much more intentional about what I put into my closet, what I choose to make, what I choose to spend my time with. All of these resources, both material and time and financial, are all limited and they are precious and so um, it just takes a little bit more thought about what you're going to do with all of those resources, how you're going to spend them. So part of that to help with that idea is actually um, Tabitha came to record uh, a, a workshop with us uh, just before the retreat and so she came to our place and she recorded um, a workshop called Making Your Best Nine and the whole idea is about being intentional about what it is that you want to make for next year. So looking at, you know, nine different projects that you might want to make, nine different garments, nine shawls, or maybe two shawls and four socks, or whatever it is, whatever combination it is, it, things that you want to make, to have that all be premeditated, to really think about, you know, what are the things that you need in your closet? What are the things that you don't have? What are the kind of colors that you enjoy? What are the kinds of textures that you want to work with? all of these kinds of things, and thinking about what are the things that you would like to learn. Thinking about all those things and putting together as a big plan. So for me, I think that my big plan is to make this epic cloth project for 2020, and I think it's gonna be about designing rugs. And I think that maybe it could be nine different rugs, or maybe it's three different rugs and two sweaters and a shawl and some socks or something like that. But this is what I'm going to be working on for the next couple of weeks is really just mapping out, thinking, coming up with ideas, you know, doing some research and doing some planning for what I want to do for next year. 
So that is it for this episode. I would love to hear from you guys if you are doing any planning for projects that you're thinking about making in 2020, if you have ever done the Make 9 challenge that was on Instagram, um, if you have made already your best 9 and you don't need to make a best 9 anymore, or which 9 projects do you think that you might like to make for next year as well. I would love to hear from you guys. You guys can leave your comments down below. I read every single comment. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you like this, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. I come here every Friday. We talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing and talk about making time to do things in the fiber arts. So thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye for now.